example, let's say you're soloing and you really are just thinking about the scale and you're not thinking about those core tones, you're gonna feel lost. This video and this method is to train your brain to stay on those chord tones while you're soloing. You are emphasizing the music. You are playing with the music. You're not trying to come up with something on your own in a diatonic scale and hoping that sounds good. All right, welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. On the road, currently in Montreal, Canada. Absolutely having a blast. It's been a while since I made a video and I'm back at it. And this, uh, this lesson is actually really cool for anyone who struggles to kind of follow chords when we're improvising or doesn't understand the, um, the true value of, you know, uh, of emphasizing chord tones in your soloing. This idea behind this lesson came from my email, which I have is uh, I have a guitar question at gmail.com. Uh, I actually got this question a couple times, which is, you know, I'm having a hard time soloing and having it sound good and also following the chords because we know that following the chords in your solo helps highlight and tell the story. And so this lesson here is for you to, is designed really for you to um, practice so that your mind can keep focus of those chords. This isn't about necessarily soloing, uh, even though it's gonna sound great, this is more about if you have trouble kind of like multitasking, then this will help you um, learn how to keep track of those chords on a different plane while you're soloing in your mind. Okay, so let's just get down to it. It's really very, very simple, all right? What we're gonna do is we need a couple ingredients. First, we need the high E string, and knowing the notes on this fretboard is pretty important, but we'll go over, you know, the, the notes pretty much on E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. You wanna know where they are. You wanna know seventh fret is a B, eighth fret is a C, 10th fret is a D, all right? Now, and, and so knowing those note names is probably the first ingredient we need just on that high E string. Second ingredient we need is your pointer finger, very much like the Never Lost Pentatonic. What we're gonna do is our first finger is gonna help us find the notes. We always use our first finger as a pointer. It helps kind of like, you know, identify where we are. Other pentatonic positions, which we're gonna talk about, have root notes on different fingers, but we're gonna use our pointer finger right now. So uh, if I need a G, I'm gonna put my first finger on the G. If I need a C, I'm going to put it on the eighth fret. If I need a D, I'm going to put it on the tenth fret. If I need an A, I'm going to put it on the fifth fret. All right. And so, how do we keep track of our chords while soloing? And how do we solo? How do we solo with uh, with intent and beauty and connection? to the song, well, this is how you do it. The other ingredients we're gonna need is what we call, some people call it a form one pentatonic, some people call it a form two. We're gonna call it just a basic major pentatonic shape. It's gonna be popping up on the screen, okay? And just to let you know, the third fret of the E string here is the same note as the third, fring, uh, third fret of the E string here, and we're talking about this pentatonic shape. All right, that's one that a lot of people know. Now, some people might call it an E-shaped pentatonic. Some people might call it a number. But what we're, what we're concerned about is that the root note is on the high E string played with our first finger right here. And we really only want to concern ourselves with what I just played. Just pretty much the thin three strings. And maybe, maybe your pinky right there on that note, which is a root note as well. So getting this down is important. Another reason why it's important is because it goes with this chord, okay, any, like, well, this chord here, which is the E-shaped chord, anytime I play this bar chord, I can play this pentatonic that goes right with it. Why is that important? Well, if you look at the pentatonic, we have, let's do it backwards, you know, five, three, five, three, four, two. These notes, three, three, and four, right here, are part of the chord. So if I was so long on top of a G chord, I would say G, right? Okay, there's my G. I have my pentatonic. If a G chord is playing, this should go with it, but also my chord tones are right here. And the chord tones are what you want to emphasize, what you want to punch. You know, it's my dog. And uh, you, it's what you want to punch, It's what, and you don't want to mess with them. You don't mess with them at all. You don't bend them, nothing. These are the pristine notes. So if I need a G, my first finger says, okay, G, where you navigate with the first finger, third fret, C. If I, if I need the C major pentatonic, great. Here it is, C, same shape. You want to be concerned with just these guys right now. And your first finger is leading the way. Now this is for major. So 
so far we have a, one major pentatonic box that we're going to use. Um, we have our first finger pointing the ways to our notes. Now let's talk about minor. If we need a minor, our first finger is going to do the same job. Let's say we need an A minor. That's an A. And we're going to play the regular minor pentatonic box. Now the, the shape's coming up here from thick to thin. Five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight. Five, eight. But we really only want to concern ourselves with the top three strings. And this note here, that's a root note there. That's a good place to come home. All right, so if I need an A minor, there it is. If they were playing an A minor and I need to solo over an A minor. Right, the chord tones, where are the chord tones? Well, it's awesome because the chord tones are right here. These three notes. All right, even this guy here, but really let's, just look, let's look at these three strings. These are the ones you don't want to mess with. You don't want to bend them, you don't want to twist them, nothing. You can go and you can stop on them right and hold them that connects you to the music so what does all this do for us well if we have a song that even if it's in a key but the chords are changing you know and and we're trying to um follow those chords well our first finger is going to lead the way now i have a backing track um loaded up here it's a very very famous grateful dead song it's a, a backing track to friend of the devil it's a nice easy chord progression and the chords are g to c back to g to c D, A minor, D, A minor, C, D. All right, I'm going to play the backing track. I'm going to play with it just so you can hear it, all right? I'm not going to sing. I might mumble, but here's the backing track. All right, that was me messing up. All right, here we go. Here's the backing track. G, C, G. talk say I wanted the soul to the song and let's say that I would just grab this is in the key of G and you know you can grab the G major scale but let's say you're soloing and you're really you're just thinking about the scale and you're not thinking about those chord tones you're gonna feel lost this video and this method is to train your brain to stay on those chord tones while you're soloing. So, what am I gonna do? Well, G, okay. Well, my first finger points to a G. It's a G major chord, so I need the major pentatonic form. That shape, that's, the, that's for major. And then it goes to C. I'm gonna take this right to the eighth fret. There's a C. And I'm gonna play the same major pentatonic shape. It goes back to a G. Back to a C. Then it goes to D. All right, that's 10th fret, here. And then it goes to A minor. There's my A, I need my minor, that's form one. Form one, whatever, E minor shape, well, you know the shape I'm talking about. Back to D, 10th fret, my first finger's pointing. A minor, quickly for two beats. To a C major, up to the eighth fret. And then back to D. Now, I'm gonna keep this very, very, very simple. I'm gonna solo a couple times. All I'm gonna do in this uh, pass through right now is I'm just going to um, show you that I'm gonna be conscious of those chords. I'm gonna try and play little pieces of the pentatonic. Is it gonna sound magical right now? No, no, but you're just gonna hear that it works, okay? So let's check this out. G. C. See that oh I shook the whole table. You can see that um, it works. It's bound with those chord tones, right? Even if I just played that live, I'd be happy with it because you are emphasizing the music. You are playing with the music. You're not trying to come up with something on your own in a diatonic scale and hoping that sounds good. Your mind is focused on those chord tones. Don't mind the helicopter flying over. I'm just gonna continue filming. So now just to point out, those were moving the pentatonics. I'm keeping my mind on those chords. But now, you know, I can see those chords, those little pieces right here, like G, C, G, C, 
right? And then D, A minor, D, A minor, C, D. All right, cool. So why am I doing that? Well, because I know I can start and or pause on those notes and I can mess with anything else that's not a chord tone. By messing, I mean bending, sliding maybe fancily. Right? But when I play any one of these notes, I kind of want to punch those notes there. And let's see if we can just emphasize a little bit more chord tones. What I want to say is, I forgot to mention this, every pentatonic is three-fifths chords. Like, the three notes of the chords are inside those five notes of the pentatonic. They're always going to be there. So take advantage of them. Let's see what we got. Now, this is a very, very, very simple technique to try and practice. Why do you want to practice this? Well, A, it's always going to sound good. B, it's going to start making you focus on those chord tones. Whether you're soloing diatonically, whether you're moving pentatonics, each way, you know, soloing in different ways has different things to offer. This offers a very classical sound, like classic rock sound, a very, as my wife said, a joyous or jovial sound. Um, and it's always going to sound right, but more importantly, you are thinking about the chords as you move. Now, if you want to practice this stuff with me, I'm going to be doing another song. This was a Grateful Dead song. I'll be doing a fish song on Patreon where we get to like really practice this with some extra bonus moves that are involved in this stuff. But right now, if you, you know, really want to focus on keeping like that separate eye, that separate mind frame on the chords while you're soloing, this is how you practice it. And when you do it, Excuse me. It's always going to sound good. Thank you so much for being here on Stitch Method on the road in Montreal. Uh, back in action. It's good to be here. My beard is way too big. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.